Welcome to Thruple Talk Podcast. We are a Thruple who lives together and raises kids together. And today we're going to talk about how we make space for individual dyads within our Thruple relationship. Now, this is a topic we are covering because we have personally had challenges in this area. And then we're also hearing from people in our Facebook community, the Thruple Talk Connection Hub, that other people are having questions and concerns. So I wanted to talk about how we've overcome some of the right. challenges and uh, how we've come yeah. to a place where we actually have really healthy dyads now. Yeah, give some practical advice on how to do it. Yeah. Yep. So one of the problems we've had, like, because I think all of us have kind of had our own challenges. Yep. For me, a big problem was asking for what I wanted. Um, I, it was easier for me to kind of make space for you guys, but it was harder to ask or even receive. So when you would offer that Josh and I could have a date night, I would feel bad or I'd be like, oh, no, it's okay. Even though I really wanted the date night, yep. like, well, yeah, you don't want to be uh, an imposition, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. The, the hard thing for me was because when we started, we were in a V dynamic. And then um, when you guys decided you wanted to start dating each other, you like, asked me if that was okay. And I was like, yes. But inside, I was like nervous. I was like, oh, man, what does this mean? Like, how are things going to change and, you know, moving forward? And then uh, when you guys started going on dates and then spending uh, the nights together and stuff, and it was like, I was bored. I was like, I, you know, I had FOMO. I never had jealousy. Jealousy not wasn't really a feeling I experienced, but the FOMO, yeah, I was like, man, I want to be happy. You want to be doing that? You want to have yeah. that cocktail too? Yeah, yeah. I want to go out. <laughs> you guys want out to restaurants I've never been to, and you know, we live in a new city, so it's like. Um, uh, so at first there was definitely some FOMO, and then, but then I realized I was like, well, wait a minute, you know, this is a time. This is an opportunity for me to do some of the things that I never have time for that I enjoy doing by myself. So. It gives me time to, you know, I love classic video games. So it's giving me time to uh, play some old video games, read books that I've been waiting to read for a long mm -hmm. time that I don't have the time for and uh, watch horror movies that neither of you like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to watch horror movies, the, you know, try to find the scarier, the better. So it became, it went from the opposite. At first it was like, man, tonight's, you know, I'm going to be by myself tonight. I'm going to be bored. This sucks. Da, 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 too. I was like, now I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I was like, this yeah. is my night to recharge and do the things that I like that make me feel good. Yeah, and I've heard that from other other throuples too. Like they're looking forward to that alone time. They either go out by themselves or they eat whatever they want. They don't have yeah. to give explanations to anyone. And yeah, it's yeah. like, it's it's um, a refreshing uh, thing to do, especially when you've been in a, in a relationship for so long. Yes. I like it. It was another part of it too was uh I always have this, you know, this guilt I'm carrying around that I never spend enough time with the kids. It's like, okay. oh, I'm working, I got my career, we got this, you know, we do a podcast, we you know, we're into so many things. And it's never that, you know, I want to make sure there's plenty of quality time where you can just sit down and talk to the kids and watch movies yeah. and do all the things they want to do. And not like, be in a rush. Because you, know, you know you have them for the whole time, like whatever they were. Yeah. So when night. I know it's like that you guys are going out, then it's like, guess what? We're doing it, the tea party mm -hmm. you always wanted yeah. to do. It, and we're gonna, I'm going to dress up as Rich yep. Charming. <laughs> and you're going to be Cinderella. And, yes. you know, it's, uh, so then it, it, for, it gives me that forced blocked out time, yeah. that, which makes me feel good too. Because it's like I now am spending the quality yeah. time in this area that I wanted to, so. Yeah, yeah, and just take advantage, like be mindful of all the space that you have to do something instead of thinking of what I could have done, you know, like mm -hmm. I could have been doing. So I, I think a lot of people talk about, you know, compersion, and uh, I think some people think that's just an automatic thing that's built in, but it for me, at least, uh, it was a learned trait mm -hmm. over yeah. by practicing it, and then it becomes natural. Mm -hmm. um, because it is exciting. It's like when you guys go out or whatever, then I get my time with the kids and some me time at the end of the night and all this. And I, but then the next day, I'm very interested in what you guys did. Where'd you, what'd you eat? You know, what, where'd you guys go? Did you have a good time? Anything funny happened? Whatever. I don't want intimate details of that's, you know, just for your relationship. Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> I just, but I, you know, I'm just curious. I, it makes me feel part of it. You're like, oh, well, yeah. we found this new place and cocktails are off the chain. Mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. Then I'm like, oh, all right, that's awesome. Then that's where the compersion you know, part yeah. comes in for me. Yeah. It's like, oh, and it makes you feel good because you know you facilitated that, you helped. Yeah, yeah. If I, especially well, yeah, if I plan it. Yeah, you know, like even, just, even if you didn't plan, just taking the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Having a right. yeah, having a hand in just yeah. helping make that happen. Yeah, one of my issues, the main issue that I had when we first started going out uh, was something that I call it poly guilt, which I've heard, I've heard the term yeah. used. Um, it's I would feel guilty for taking Josh away from you, Shar, for example. Mm -hmm. That's when we were a V, you know. And now I don't really have that with any of us, but that was like, I wanted to do something, but at the same time I was thinking if I'm going to ask you to do it, then Shara's going to like, I'm going to take you away from her. And what if she wants you? And what if she's not saying what she needs? And I would get in my head with a million things and it would just, I would end up not doing, doing it or asking for it. So 
um, I think it's important that you can rely on your partners to be able to ask, you know, when they need something and not you having to take care of their needs. It's important that you make sure that your needs are met, you know? Yeah. 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 That was definitely something I've really struggled with was asking, like I said, asking and receiving and you know, right. letting you watch the kids, letting Josh watch the kids. Like that was, that was really hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think partially I thought there'd be some quid pro quo, even though I didn't, I absolutely rejected you ever doing quid pro quo with me. I just, I, I think I just assumed there's, really there's nothing pizza. wrong in doing that. Right. Cause it, there's not, but it's I, more, I didn't want to feel indebted. Like, but I it's not know. like it's it's not in if you would do something like f nice for me and Josh, for example, the other way around, I feel very grateful and I want to yeah. reciprocate. I want it's not that I feel indebted. I want to help you get that same satisfaction from this relationship or, you know. Yeah. So it's it's not it's positive. It's all like a good thing that keeps on giving. In yeah. My opinion. Yeah. And once I learned once I realized that and worked through that issue in myself, yeah. everything got so right. much better. And uh, things are not going to be equal. You know, like time is a limited resource and yes. maybe somebody's working more hours than others. And uh, if you're going to look for equality, you're probably going to end up disappointed. Yeah. Ideally, in an ideal world, everybody gets enough time. But uh, I guess fairness, it's more important. Like, make sure you split your available time, not necessarily equally, but fairly between yeah. the, the, two, the two partners that you have. Yeah. And allowing those times to look different too like maybe maybe i don't get as many date nights out but we have more t right. space to do things at yeah, home, again not, you know. not equal but yeah 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 just kind of depending right. on you know as schedules are changing especially with you know having jobs out of the house or working from home or whatever as things change with our dynamics just kind of allowing those dyad uh special times to change dynamics as well mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just going to leave you frustrated too. If you're caught, so they look at the calendar like, well, they had two. And yeah, I've only yeah. Had one. yeah. You're like, you're just. No. Well, and you're yeah. always you're always going to have something to be upset about if yeah. you're going if to start you're counting for, and if you're looking mm -hmm. for where am I not getting what I what I'm owed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't concentrate on what am I not getting. Concentrate mm -hmm. on setting up dates and times for your other partners for right. their yeah. dyad. Right. So that's the main takeaway. Like, be proactive. Don't expect to be asked, hey, can you watch the kids? Or can you yeah. stay home? Or can, do you mind if we just be proactive and keep in mind that your two partners do want to spend time together. Mm -hmm. So be kind and arrange that for them to whatever extent it's possible. Yeah. A quote I recently heard, which I really liked was that the only thing missing from your relationship is what you're not bringing to it. Oh, like, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's so easy to point fingers. Yeah. Like, well, if you would just, if you would like, yeah, yeah. And um, have patience, especially for new throuples. Yeah. It's such a big adjustment. And uh, even if you fail today, you're going to do better tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. It does get better with time. It does. I think I want to circle back to something we touched on earlier, like letting the relationships look different. To me, that was, I didn't even realize I was doing it, um, but I was expecting my relationship to at least be more similar to her and Josh's. And it, it, saying it even now, it seems silly. With, in my relationship with mm -hmm. you, yeah. Yeah, I remember so, I was talking about that, yeah. So, like, you know, I would see you wanting more hugs from him and then maybe not wanting as many hugs from me. I was like, well, she, she must not love me as much or whatever. And, yeah. like, and now it seems so silly, yeah. but I think I just wasn't allowing our relationship to move at a different pace. And uh, I think also I didn't really know from the get-go exactly what i wanted our relationship to look like or what you wanted our relationship well, to look like well and it makes that you were putting it in the pattern of what you knew yeah. was a relationship how it's supposed to be yeah so yeah. yeah yeah and the only relationship i'd ever been in was with josh and the exactly. dynamics of that masculine and feminine are very different than these you know mm -hmm. primarily feminine and feminine it's like it's just learning learning to give space to let that relationship become what it naturally is was a learning curve for sure. Yeah, that's that's definitely very helpful. Not have expectations. I want this relationship mm -hmm. to be exactly like this. Yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like. All oh. three of our relationships look, look totally very different. different. Very different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is fine. <laughs> so um, one of the benefits, we always talk about the benefit of being in a throuple, more support all the time. So instead of looking at it as a negative, how, why am I not getting enough time? I think we should choose to look at it as a positive. We have a third person. So therefore we have uh, we have somebody to stay home with the kids, for example, if mm -hmm. we want to take a road trip. 
Um, yeah. Always focus on the positive, not on the negative. Yeah. Yes. And I'd say for the most part, we do enjoy all going out together. We do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we usually get babysitter. That's ideal. Yeah. That's yeah, what we mostly do. But sometimes everything, something comes up with like a concert and uh, Liz's like, ah, that's not my <laughs> genre of music or whatever. <laughs> so like, I'll, I'll volunteer to stay, kick this one out. You guys can have your. Yeah. Right. I'm not forced yeah. into this, like to do it for you, which I would. Like, I'm such a good partner. Yeah. Then I can be like, you know what? I'm just going to watch the kids yeah. and have some alone time and take a bath and you guys go enjoy. Exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> There's definitely things you guys do that I'm like, yeah, yep. no problem. Our, our girl stuff. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> which you are not invited to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One of the main things that I used to have, uh, I think everybody feels that when two partners want to spend time together, you feel that you're being excluded. Like you two want to be together, therefore you don't want me Mm. and I'm kicked out. So I'm all alone crying, going, you know, Mm. and uh, I realized that's not the case because if you two go out together, that doesn't mean that I'm excluded. You can send me a picture. I can like enjoy it with you and you still love me and you're still coming home to me. You know, it's, it's, it was such a big deal for me to realize that I was automatically feeling excluded. Like mm-hmm. I'm not part of the relationship anymore. That's a, I think everybody feels that when somebody tells you, I want to spend time with somebody else. You're like, oh, you don't want me anymore. That's probably a monogamous mindset. And it's something that I was subconsciously like thinking and feeling. It yeah. helped me a lot to realize that mm. I'm still yeah. part of the throuple, even though I'm not with you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That, that is big. And I think for me, I struggled with jealousy more early on. Um, kind of, I guess that subconscious fear still of, is he still with me because he loves me? Or is he with me because he's still obligated, obligated. to be with me? And does he really enjoy his time with you more than his time with me? And and that was, I think, part of my hang up too with asking for time with Josh. I was like, well, what if he, what if he agrees just because he feels obligated? obligated. <laughs> you know, it just, and again, those are things that got, easier with yeah. time and again like we've mentioned in our other jealousy episodes when those jealousies or envies would come up it's looking inside not pushing it away not ignoring it but why digging like into feel? why am i feeling this way is there truth in what i'm thinking and feeling and where is that truth and and mm-hmm. and just digging in and, and healing those things yeah. That's a big change in having a polyamorous relationship versus a monogamous relationship. If your partner tells you they want to spend time with another partner, it doesn't mean that they don't want to spend time with you yeah. anymore. It's a huge change. and something that you can't just do this and that's it. I'm over it. Yeah. You were raised to think <laughs> that if, if you say you want to spend time with her, that means you don't want me anymore. Yeah. 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 All this, I guess, the social norms of I want to feel like... The only I'm girl the only in the one. world. You're the only one yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some planning is needed. When you have kids, yeah. being spontaneous. When you have kids, being spontaneous is hard as a couple right. as well. If anything, yeah. now that I think it's about harder. it, yeah. it's easier to Diane just... time is harder when you... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now it's much easier because yeah. like, if you two are in the bedroom, clearly you're having alone time right. and I'm going to like keep the kids away from the door, you know, yeah. like have yeah. them busy with something else. So it's easier. Every time I, I think, like, what are the challenges? And I realize, well, it's not really a challenge. It's actually better. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get past, I think, the jealousy, yeah. the FOMO, the you, you want him, you don't want me. Yeah. Once you get past these fears, <laughs> then uh, everything is much easier. Yeah. To be realistic, it's important to keep in mind that these things need to be planned out. So put it in the calendar. Don't just, don't just say, let's do it. We're going to do it. Everybody's busy. Everybody has careers. Put it in the calendar and schedule it. And um, yeah, I think people talk about Google, Google Calendar, and yes. Bali. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not that there can't still be space for the spontaneous outings and spontaneous, right. you know, fun yeah, time always. as well. Uh, but just something about having that intentional planned time does help too, and that actually helped me a lot with getting over the jealousies as well. Like realizing that there is time, and there's time for yeah. all of us, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I'm, and I, I love having things planned out. It makes me feel like mm-hmm. calm. <laughs> but sometimes we even just block out a time. Like we don't, we're not certain what we're going to do, but we know we know we're going to do something. Yeah. And we'll figure it out as we get closer to it because you know things change, and or we might figure out something else we want to do, change your mind, yeah. whatever. Uh, one thing we do um, throughout the week, though, do a quick plug. Even though we are not sponsored and we did not get anything, for yeah. free, we paid for this ourselves. <laughs> but just excited to share, we found this game, Drunk Desires couples drinking game, but they make 
a card. Oh, right. You went here, you put it up there. <laughs> oh, I, for three or more. Nobody ever makes any games that are for three people. Yes, so so cool. it's pretty fun. And Char's got this other game we've actually been playing throughout the week. This other one, Junk Desires Couples Drinking Game. Ah. It's called Experiences. <laughs> Am I showing it right? There <laughs> I think go. so. <laughs> and it gives us little challenges to do. And we, we uh, you take the whole deck and we split it up three ways. Mm -hmm. And then we keep dropping these little challenges on each other throughout the week. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. And I'm already not playing it. I think... Uh, <laughs> I think it came with <laughs> gave me a bad one. And I didn't too like it. Hard for you. <laughs> too hard. For well, you still the game's not over yet. <laughs> well, but why would it continue, right? Because if I'm already getting punished, <laughs> no, you still have time to. Oh yeah, that that's card. true. Maybe I get so hey, you'll grow some balls. Yeah. One day. <laughs> <laughs> I have confidence. I think you'll make it happen. <laughs> so I think there were 50 cards altogether, and yeah. then there were a couple that didn't apply to us. So we just pulled those out, and then it was even. So just some examples here is uh, one was the weekend card. You have to make plans for an adventure this weekend. And uh, Josh gave me that one. Um, and then we adapted it because we didn't, we already had plans for the upcoming weekend. But Liv has offered that on an upcoming weekend, she's going to be off. And she's like, hey, you guys plan something. And, and then Josh gave me that card. Like, all right, you take charge and make the plans. Because usually I sit back and relax while he makes the plans. So. <laughs> um, and then another example is the take me out card. Take me out to a dinner to a restaurant of my choice. Perry Steakhouse. <laughs> yeah. And these are the clean ones. There's some pretty spicy ones. On there. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the white ones are are just kind of the daytime yeah. stuff. And then they have blue cards as well that are... Yeah, that gets very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we also, when we, after we divvied them up and we were holding them so only we could see our own cards, we decided to make a rule where you could trade up to two cards yes. with anybody that wanted to trade mm -hmm. without knowing what they were. That kind of helped because some of the cards didn't really apply. So we were like yeah. a little swappy. Yep. Back and forth until we were all satisfied. We're like, all right, game on. And we gave ourselves a time limit of 60 days? Six, six, 50 days. Yeah. 50 yeah. days? Yeah. yeah. 50 cards. And a punishment days. if you don't finish. Oh, yeah. We each all your cards. have a punishment. Yeah, we each have a punishment. So it's, <laughs> it's very <go> personalized <laughs> punishment. <laughs> it's going very well. <laughs> if you like our episodes, don't forget to subscribe and share them with people just like yourselves. And head over to Facebook and join Thruple Talks Connection Hub if you are in a Thruple or someday hope to be. And we'll see you next time.